Hi guys, it's France. Welcome to this quite special journal on Monday, week 133. And working in my journal on Monday art journal, the paper that I'm working on already has a layer of paint, which was a leftover from a workshop. And yes, this is one of my brand new stencils, which is the circle one. I have it in a big size and in a smaller size. And what I really like about it is that it's thin which makes it very easy to use uh, in mixed media to apply layers and layers of medium over it. So I'm opening my journal on whatever page makes it easiest to have it flat on the table. That's one of the good things of not having a cover attached to your journal. And now I can start applying a first layer over my stencil, which is weathered wood which is a crackle medium. So I'm just applying it using a paintbrush, painting away from the stencil so, I, so that I don't push uh, the medium underneath the stencil. So like I said, the stencil is thin, so it's bendable and you can easily um, apply it on the surface in the way you need it so that you can keep on working. And yes, I did have to clean um, my stencil in between so that my fingers wouldn't be covered in weathered wood. As the weather wood isn't dry yet, but I want to continue working, I'm going in with the smaller stencil so that I can still apply circles in between the bigger circles that I already have on the surface. Like I said, this is a special journal Monday because a whole bunch of things went wrong, especially with the remote of the camera. So when I thought that I was filming, I wasn't. And when I didn't need to film, I was filming. So the layer I applied uh, once the weather was dry is a mixture of two colors of paint, which is the brown and the blue that you could see at the top. And then I made a mixture with those two colors. And then I applied it using that black sponge that you could see at the bottom right. Um, so I used a big surface sponge so that I didn't have to overwork it. Um, and I dabbed it in a quite thin layer at the top and a thicker layer at the bottom. And then where I had the weathered wood underneath, well, you can see the crackles. So the thing was to apply it in one go, not to play around too much with going back over it and over it again, because otherwise I wouldn't have any crackles left in the end. Once dry, you could really see the crackles. And I went back in with the stencil using a charcoal pencil. And that's when I realized that the weathered wood wasn't completely dry everywhere. So like I said, this is the journal on Monday where a whole bunch of things went wrong. But that's okay, because it scraped away some of the paint, 
that I have on the top layer. And that gave an even more grungy effect, so I'm happy with it. And once I'm done with the charcoal pencil, I'm going in with a blending stump to blend everything. Next up, I'm going in with my Crackles stencil and clear modeling paste. So again, there's a small and a big version of this stencil and this is the small one. So again, as I don't have a cover on my journal, I can lay it however I need so that I can work on a flat surface. I want to use this stencil over and over again on different areas of my spread, so in between every application I need to clean it. My modeling paste is dry, so now I can go in with sanding paper and I'm not only sanding the modeling paste, I'm also sanding the edge of the paper.
This is where the fun begins because by adding the stress ink um, you can see where the paper has really been sanded and on some parts of the modeling paste it will adhere more than on others and that is what will create that cool effect in the end. Now I don't want my whole spread to be covered in distress ink, so I'm dabbing with a baby wipe to take some of the distress ink away. As I really like the effect of the distress ink being picked up by the uh, sand modeling paste, I'm going back in with sanding paper so that I can enhance that effect. And to make it work with the charcoal pencil that I have on the spread, I'm also going in with some black distress ink. I'm going to use my circle stencil again, but first I'm taking away the distress ink that I have in that area because I don't want it to contaminate the light paint that I'm going to use. So this is chalky finish. And first I'm going to apply a layer of that one and only color. You can find the detailed list of all the products that I used on my website. The link is in the description of this video. And on my website you can also find a complete list of all the Journal on Monday videos with their related blog post link. So if there's a product you would like to look up for a certain video, that's where you can find it. While applying that color, I decided which color I wanted to add for my shading and how I wanted the shade to appear on the circle. So once my decision was made, I could go in with the second color. Now this game of blending is something that I can keep going for a very, very long time. So that's what probably took the most time in making this spread. The video is 19 minutes long, it took me an hour and 15 minutes to do the whole uh, spread without the drying time. 
And so the biggest part was taken by this. So let's speed this up. I have to make sure the paint is completely dry before I go in with the same charcoal pencil that I used for the other circles and then the blending stump as well. This is where I decided to mess things up again with the remote control. So I added stamping on uh, the circle. I added some journaling with a black and white pen around the circle and I added the wording. I also added black and white splatters and that's it. I hope you liked today's video. If so, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you back next time. Ta-da!